Hello, my name is Petty Officer James Bliley and welcome to another episode of Defense TV's flagship program, The Force, where we bring you the most impactful stories from around the services. When it comes to defending the United States and her allies, service members rely heavily on their weapons, and that takes training, lots of it. Next, we head to the range and learn what it takes for Marines to become the fastest guns in the West. Today we're uh, focusing on working on transition drills, uh, transitioning from our primary weapon to our secondary weapon. It's, uh, it's a major point of emphasis for this uh, shooting package that we're a part of to get uh, ready for a, to be a direct action force. Yes, uh, for this it's uh, very vital that they get this and understand their weapon systems, uh, both pistol and rifle, for inside the shoe house for their uh, CQB piece. They gain those skills that not only for the small raids, but also in the uh, open environment, they are able to execute uh, any type of mission being comfortable with their rifles. It's been phenomenal. It's uh, very much of a crawl, walk, run mentality where we're starting off super slow, just dry fire drills, and eventually we're going to start working into live fire and just slowly but surely get going. The company's at a great level right now, looking forward towards the 15th Mew. Got a couple more big stepping stones to get towards, but we'll be ready once the time comes. You can learn more about the Marines' Close Quarters Tactics course at Marines.mil. And while the Marines improve their weapon skills through training, the Air Force is improving their fleet through technology, developing systems that can correct hazardous situations and ultimately save lives. You're in collision now, steering. Everybody makes mistakes, okay? You make mistakes, I make mistakes. Every single person out there makes mistakes. Being a pilot shouldn't be a death sentence. And when you make a mistake in the airplane, that shouldn't kill you. So if you had a system that could recover you, if you made a mistake, that would be a good thing. Auto GCAS stands for the Automatic Ground Collision Avoidance System. It was developed in the 1980s by the Air Force Research Lab by five uh, computer scientists that were also aerodynamicists. Uh, it was designed to save lives down on the Edwards Ranges during test flight because we had a lot of uh, aircraft that had controlled flight into terrain on test flights. The automatic ground collision avoidance system was designed to automatically uh, fly the airplane away from a hazardous situation so the pilot didn't die and we didn't lose the jet. Prior to takeoff, uh, digital train elevation data is loaded on board the aircraft and this is already happening. Basically it's a digital map of wherever the aircraft is going to fly that specific mission. Um, as the airplane is flying around, um, it's locating itself over that digital map with GPS and INS. At the same time, um, a trajectory prediction algorithm is running and um, that recovery maneuver is to roll the aircraft to wings level 5G pull. If that ever intersects the two-dimensional profile, that's when it'll go ahead and command the fly-up. And so if the pilot um, sees this recovery happen, basically there'll be two chevrons that will appear in your heads-up display, and they'll touch in the middle. When they touch, that means the automatic system has taken control. This system was not only nuisance-free, but also that it could have protected against almost all of the past historical mishaps that we've lost due to controlled flight into terrain. To see more on the automatic ground collision avoidance system, just head to airman.dodlive.mil. News, photos, videos, Marine Corps orders and directives, and Marine Corps social media content is fed directly from marines.mil and divids to the app, Marines Mobile, the official app of the Corps. Get the latest service headlines from around the Air Force. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at AFTV Radio for new reports every Tuesday and Friday. Around the Air Force, from Europe to the Pacific to the USA, we've got you covered. Improving technology is absolutely saving lives on the battlefield and in the skies, but nothing can take the place of operational techniques and careful planning. Next, we look at how the Army is improving commander's options affecting the vast and complicated cyberspace within their area of operation. Cyberspace is a vast domain. We are building an environment that replicates the real world. So what we do is we bring a team of operators and analysts who will enable the commander by showing him the information space he's moving through. Where does cyberspace affect his unit as they move through the actual land domain? 
and then follow on, how can we support his tactical objectives with the effects that we can bring in that domain. Our analysis and our recommendations through the warfighting functions ultimately get synchronized and presented to the brigade planners and brigade commander for his approval in terms of how does he want to accomplish his objectives. We are starting to shape our picture of where does cyberspace fit in the deep fight? Where does it fit in the, in the close fight? These are all things that we're learning through our experience with the brigades at rotations like this. You can learn more about all the training techniques the Army is doing by heading to soldiers.dodlive.mil. From the tools of the modern warfighter to the passion of a World War II hero, Decades after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, one man made it his mission to identify the many sailors and marines laid to rest in graves marked unknown. After the first three inch fire, which was right below us, I don't remember hearing anything. That's all past to me. All my Navy career basic is past history. But 20 some years ago, I go up the punch bowl. Little lady comes to the counter there and she says, can I help you? I says, can you tell me where the Pearl Harbor casualties are buried in this cemetery? She says, no, are you kidding? I says, no ma'am, I'm not kidding. I'm damn serious. She says, I'm sorry, I can't help you. So I start walking and I ran across all these unknowns. And to me, that is pretty sad. I've spent the last 26 years working on that cemetery, getting grave markers updated and so forth. So, yeah, I've spent really all, other than, other, most of my spare time has been in that back room doing research. I computerized all World War II Navy, Coast Guard, and Marine Corps casualties. 68,000, roughly. What's next, I don't know. To see more inspirational stories like Emery's, head to ah.mil. Scanning for a target, it's rolling up, and it'll fire just after it gets up on top. All Hands is the Navy's premier multimedia hub, providing a wide variety of news, information, imagery, and stories all across the Navy for active duty, reserves, retirees, and their families. If there's a story to be told, Navy All Hands will be there to tell it. You can always check out The Force at any time on the Defense TV app or online. Visit your app store to download Defense TV and stay connected to all service news. I'm Petty Officer James Bliley. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next edition of The Force.